cult of personality Look for the bare necessities The simple bare necessities Forget about your worries and your strife Yeah, man, I mean the bare necessities Old Mother Nature's recipes That brings the bare necessities of life And we're totally not copying Dr. Wolf Yeah, oh, man! Hey! <laughs> 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 yes, greetings, every people. This is your cult of personality, Tune Critic's name, and Tune's name of my game. Bliss. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to kiss myself right here, right? <laughs> How do you forget your line? I was supposed to give you, like, ample time, just like, and. And I am the lowly alicorn of the Rift community, also known as Lightning Bliss. Hi. You like rainbows. Yes, I do. <laughs> so yeah, it has been about uh, two hours since me and Bliss have seen Jungle Book, the new Jungle Book live action movie that a lot of people were skeptical about, but apparently is earning critical acclaim all across the board. So figure it's opening weekend. We might as well check it out. Early consensus is pretty freaking awesome. I am so freaking hyped and I'm still trying to come down from it, you know? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, who hasn't grown up with the Disney's cartoon version of the the story, right? And and now here's this live action, and you're wondering, are they going to kill my childhood with this movie? No, no, they, they didn't. It's it's really surprising that they didn't, because uh, I walked into this just thinking, okay, I expect a little bit of Disney charm. In fact, I was seeing it with one of my friends, and I looked over to them and said, if I don't hear Bill Murray or uh, Christopher Walken singing in this, I'm not going home happy. I obviously went home happy, so. <laughs> I mean, and the best part is that only did they sing, but it wasn't like a focused musical or anything. They had the songs for like maybe 45 seconds to a minute at the max, and then it just carried on with the story. It, was, it didn't feel forced. No, it felt like it. I think adding the songs in there was actually a good thing because for a majority of the movie, they played this out pretty seriously, but not to the point of like gritty, realistic serious. There was still a little bit of charm to it, but the songs really helped bring everything back after like some of the uh, more darker moments. And my goodness, I was not really expecting these darker moments. I mean, here I am. I'm sitting with my husband. There is a family with two younger kids next to us. And then holy mother of Luna. I, I mean, oh my goodness. Uh, there were parts where I cried. There were parts where I almost screamed and I had to catch myself. And then there were parts where I actually jumped. Yeah, I can't believe they actually kind of threw like one tiny little jump scare in there. I'm just like, seriously? Seriously? Like, like, when did this suddenly become a horror film? When did this suddenly become Ghost in the Darkness? Have you heard of that movie? Yeah, you you know that mm -hmm. with the right amount of tweaking, they could very easily turn uh, Jungle Book into a horror movie from the right perspective. Oh my goodness, wow. Yeah, most of it kind of did feel like it at some points. By the way, spoilers, if you haven't seen Jungle Book by now, uh, we'd advise you. Uh, there are going to be some points during this, so yeah, just, just giving you a reminder now. So... I don't think we need to recap the uh, the story. Everybody everybody pretty much knows if they've seen the um, the Disney version. But I like that this version actually gives uh, some more of the characters a little bit more development. In fact, uh, most notably, the wolves get more character here. Yeah, I was really happy to see that. And more happy to see that Akela finally makes an appearance. Because he was a big part of the story. He was the leader of the wolf pack. I mean, was it wow. Akela or Akela? I, oh, I think it was Akela. My bad. It might be Akela. I don't know. No, I think it was Akela. You're right. Akela. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, wow. Um, I think if I had any disappointment though with any character, it was Ka, because Ka seemed only to be there for this one particular moment, and then she was gone. Uh, well, like, I don't recall if she really had that huge of an impact on the uh, original story, but she was there, she did her thing, and then kind of just was swept along. I'll admit that was a little bit of a disappointment, but I liked how Scarlett Johansson um, played her. In fact, if oh you, my it, god, she played her well. I it mean, was really wow. creepy. I, I mean, she. I mean, for first off, I loved her voice. Very soothing. Very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, misleading. 
I don't want to you know, say I don't want to say seductive, but I want to say seducing. Very, I I got a bit of that, but I, I think it wasn't that like in the the romantic spot. More no, like no, a no, mother- more like luring in sort of thing. Luring, like, comfort, motherly. I'll protect you. It was I I think she served a little bit as as a little bit of plot exposition. Uh, this, 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 uh, yeah, exposition. that's all. Yeah. How, the f- <laughs> How do you say that word? I'm trying to keep exposition. this G rated. Exposition. <laughs> yeah, but she felt like she was more of a plot device because she filled us in with like the backstory. I'm like, oh, that's a nice way to do it. And it was it was really creepy how like that happened too because I don't remember in the Disney version that happening. No, no, no. The song was a little bit more uh, groovy, but th- this this is a little bit. Um, She's gonna eat him. Yeah, she's do you see how? Eat him. Do you see how huge she is? I'm just she like she was enormous, like bigger than Anaconda enormous. I'm, I'm gonna get shot for this, but my Anaconda don't here. <laughs> okay, just no. Why? I've seen. Okay, it kind of reminds me like she looked as big as like the Anacondas from that movie. Um, I think she was bigger than that. Seriously, like that's that's nuts. That's like Mega Python like levels there. Um, like Super Python meets Jumbo sh- versus Jumbo Shark or something. Yeah. <laughs> I liked uh, Raksha, personally. Uh, I liked oh. her character. She was a very motherly character. I felt that she added a little bit more uh, emotional depth for um, for Mowgli. Oh, Extremely. I'll get to Mowgli in a second. He's he's one of the one things I was not really okay with here, but... Uh, I, I think I, th- I liked Mowgli actually. I mean, he played the kid uh, that like the, the the whimpering kid. Well, not so much as whimpering. He had a bit of an ego. He had a tiny, very tiny chip, but he was also kind of a bit arrogant. It's like, ah. Uh, uh. I mean, I thought what was interesting though, whereas the cartoon Mowgli clearly did not want to go back to the man village, and he kind of was manipulated into going a little bit whereas here he volunteered to leave the pack but not initially to go back to the man village he just said i'm gonna leave the pack so y'all will be safe right and but bagheera's like no you're gonna go to the man village they'll be able to protect you there you won't be safe anywhere else in the jungle so it's like huh and but yeah anyways with raksha i mean she reminds me of the mother and she in a way she reminds me of an actual real wolf because that's how mother wolves are they are very very defensive of of him too like that that was the surprising part for me i thought she was just going to be a throwaway character i thought the wolves were just going to be throwaway characters but No. no none of them were and especially kayla i mean man he he like as soon as he got he could tell that sure calm was coming. He's like, get behind me. Yeah, He's he like, was a very protective kind. Man, yeah. though, I will get to Kayla uh, when we get to Shere Khan, though. There was this one scene that both of us uh, wanted to talk about. Um, oh, my God. Going back to Mowgli, oh. though. Um, yeah, Mowgli. Go back to Mowgli. <laughs> I, I found him really annoying at some parts. I found he had a little bit of sass, and I'm just like, okay, first off, dude, back it on up. Um, I, I found some of the parts where... Uh, he was trying, he was a, the actor that they got for him, I will give him credit, he played the part well, but I felt that the Disney version, uh, did it better. Wait, this is uh, the Disney version, the cartoon version. Honestly, I hate the Disney version of Mowgli, because I thought he was kind of a grump, and angry a lot, and easy to get ticked off, and That's it's like- That's Bagheera in this movie, Bagheera is such a grump, he's not even, like, funny grump, he is just serious, all the time, like, all Bagheera- this, like, funniness just went oh, out the but- window- but Bagheera was more of a teacher of sorts and a watcher. But he had his funny moments, though. There were at least some, like, you know, comical moments with him. Uh, I think it worked in this movie, though. I don't know. I mean, Bagheera was funny at some times, but then I felt he was a grumpy jerk in the cartoon. Whereas here, he felt more like a wise old man and a teacher who, who just wanted to protect Mowgli from, you know, I guess a distance and so forth. You know, he may not have been funny, but I still thought, parental wise grandfather wise that's what he reminded me of okay yeah i'll see that uh, but uh, this this segues nicely into the other um baloo actually i felt the the chemistry between bagheera and baloo was not as not as strong as in the, nah. the cartoon version there was just very there was mutual respect between them but they didn't have that like bouncing off of one another thing like baloo would always like mess with him and bagheera's like yeah yeah but in here it just felt really just like you know what you got to do yeah i know what i got to do but okay baloo was great in this like they picked the yeah. perfect guy bill murray is baloo's is, is spot on oh 
They made a uh, made things a little different with him though. They turned him into a little bit of a con artist with, and a little bit of a, a sleaze. That kind of works in Bill yeah. Murray's favor, you know, because Bill Murray has played characters like that in the past. <laughs> yeah. The the original cartoon had him more as like you know this fun loving lazy dude, but here I feel like him being the con artist like this, especially during the uh, the scene where he has to tell Mowgli to go. Like I find that okay, there's a little bit more to his character than just being a sleaze. Yeah. It's like at first you think he is nothing but that, but no, he legitimately did care for the kid. It got to a point where he did care for him, and he's like, okay, now I'm gonna have to hurt him in order to save his life, and I'm like. Oh, the feels. Ouch. There goes the feels. And and I kind of find it ironic that, like, I think there was just that one chemistry between Bagheera and Baloo that I did like, and that was that um, Baloo told Bagheera, he's a special kid. What did I tell you? And Bagheera said, I know. I raised him. So that kind of like, makes okay. you <laughs> So it's like, yeah, Bagheera knows what who Mowgli is and who he's like. It's like, unlike Baloo, you don't, you don't know him, and you don't know what he's about to go through. And then, of course, he tells him. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know, he's being hunted by a tiger. Not just any tiger! It's Shere Khan! And then oh. he, he then he realizes the the, uh, the gravity of the situation. Yeah. Um, then I think we can talk about Shere Khan. Oh Jesus Christ. He was he is way scarier in this than than in uh, the cartoon. Like legitimately terrifying. Like yeah. well, but when he makes his entrance, when he makes his entrance entrance you can feel that with him just standing up there like everybody knows and everybody and, sees him everybody has his attention it's like that you could t you could have cut the tension with a knife yeah because I, I had watched the cartoon version prior and one of my friends was just like who is that i'm like oh yo that's Shere Khan. like <laughs> this stuff's about to get real now and it Ooh. did like it was it was very uh very menacing but Very Shere intense. Khan, I was thinking, okay, so how are they going to play this? Oh, I don't know. Maybe him walking on casually up to the wolf uh, the wolf rock, just laying down. He's just like, you know what I'm here for. And he's just acting all chill about it. He's just like, okay, all right. You think everything's you know fine what? between us? You think everything's cool between us? No, I'm going to grab you by the neck and throw you off a cliff. Guess what? Guess who's in charge now? I jumped, and I almost screamed, too. I'm just like, what? What? Whoa, 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 this is a kid's movie, you, 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 you oh, okay. It's like, yeah, I, I kind of, I mean, Hartley, if I had a child, I would I'd immediately try to, like, cover their eyes, because it was so quick, it was quick, but it was so violent at the same time, it was just out of nowhere, I mean, and I think that's what they intended to do, when an, when an animal lies down that usually means they they put their guard down they're not here to fight they're relaxing so when akela laid down next to him it's like okay they're just talking yeah but then i realized as soon as Shere khan stood up then akela stood up i'm like uh oh wait wait they're not laying down anymore oh uh oh no no boom Oh, and then he just and, turns around. He's just like, "Guess who's in charge? You are now working for me." Oh my goodness! I will protect you, which it in code word means don't do anything. I own all of you now. Yeah, and he made that even more apparent in this that one scene where he has a uh, Raksha's pups. I'm just like, rock. dude. I'm like, like, do you need to do that? That's like a major dick move, man. It like, was a scare tactic, a, a real sincere scare tactic. And not only was it a scare tactic, it was attacking her emotions. Like he was accusing her of why her pups were now in danger because of her and her stubbornness to protect Mowgli. It's like if you are protecting this man cub, you know, your pups wouldn't be in danger. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you su Okay, not only was he a monster, but he was a smart one. And he was maniacal, and he was evil, and he wasn't stupid. Oh, Wow. Yeah, it was it was pretty fun, too, that, like, at, in a fight, too, like, with Bagheera, he just, he knocks him, like, right out. And then against Baloo, like, he even manages to take down Baloo. And Baloo had a pretty good thing going for him with a major size difference. Yeah, but when you get a tiger, when a tiger sinks his fangs into your neck, you're, you're pretty much screwed. Except in here, I think he just got him on the back of the neck, you know? Yes. But Speaking still, of I mean, size difference, though, um, King Louie, that was a pretty big shock. <laughs> I think King Louie either gained a few thousand pounds or he, he, 
he ha- he has suffered a case of gigantism. What the research that I did is that there was a legend of this really big orangutan um, character. Uh, I don't know if this was in the book or not. I did not do my full research on that, but I know that they wanted to incorporate the big monkey sort of thing in there for King Louis, and that worked really well for him, too. He was pretty menacing at parts, too. I'm just like, yeah, not so fun-loving and a whole ooby doo like thing. But no, it's it's so amazing because they got Christopher Walken to be King Louis, and here he is. Just like, you can hear the music. I'm like, ah. Uh, uh, is Christopher Walken gonna sing? Yeah, Christopher yeah. Walken's gonna sing. <laughs> uh, he, it was so awkward. It's his usual Christopher Walken self, like you can expect. That it was, it was really fun. It was like, kid, do- I got ears. My ears got ears. I'm yeah. like, wow. <laughs> he played it up like a real sleaze too, and I loved that. And mm-hmm. it 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 played out pretty much like the um. The cartoon did minus like the whole with Baloo joining in on the song part. I I can understand that they had to make it a little bit more serious because when Christopher Walken's singing, you can't really take that serious. Yeah, no, you you, you really can't. And and I'm kind of glad they went that route. But you know what really surprised me from this movie? It was the ending. Yeah, they really really chose to go with like a different kind of ending. Yeah, in the cartoon, uh, yeah, if y'all haven't seen the cartoon, and why are y'all watching this? Um, but that being said, um. In the cartoon, Mowgli does go back to the man village voluntarily after he kind of gets hooked by seeing one of his own kind, who happens to be a girl. But here, after that amazing battle, that amazing fight scene, uh, he he stays. He's allowed to stay and kind of do his own thing because he's kind of proven to the jungle itself and er- and its residents that yeah, he's a man, but he can be a responsible man. You know, I heard a few people were upset about that. I'm just like, why? Isn't that more sticking closer to like what the original book had, or is? Oh god, I'm gonna, fair, I'm, I there are gonna be so book. many people in the comments saying like, "Hey, you didn't read the original book." Well, unfortunately, I didn't. So I didn't either. So yeah, I'm just as guilty. Yeah. But I have seen three versions of the Jungle Book. I've seen three versions before the cartoon. I saw this one, and it was kind of a, it was a video, and it it was a of a book of pictures of the jungle book and somebody was narrating the story and it was completely different to the disney movie where basically mowgli grows up and he does become a man and he's still living in the jungle and uh oh i remember there was a there was a Baloo, thing I... blue was not involved i know that much and she i don't right. even think Shere khan was involved but there was a wolf pack problem that was going on and akela was challenged by another wolf and yeah yeah it but was then more I saw it, the, it was more along the lines of, if I remember correctly, I made this long ago for my top seven Disney movies based on R-rated stories. Um, it was that something happened with the village and Mowgli got his animal friends and they hazed like the whole entire thing. Oh, I wow. Think had, I think it had something to do with the wolves. I could huh. be wrong. Anyway, sorry for interrupting. Um, oh, yeah, it's okay. But, and then you, of course, have the cartoon one. And the other one was a live action called, uh, I guess, a, I don't know if it was called The Jungle Book or The Jungle Boy, but it was based off The Jungle Book, where basically there was a boy. He was raised by wolves. He grew into a man. He was discovered by people, and they tried to reintegrate him back into human society. But he also knew the this temple where, yeah, there was an, an, an orangutan that lived there, but he called him King Louie, the, the, the man did, that lived in the jungle. And uh, it wasn't really about the animals. It was about the man, the, the Mowgli, and, and these people that were trying to use him to get to the treasure in the temple. Eh. Right. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah, Bill Murray, by the way, gets to sing in this. Uh, I never thought I'd be happy hearing Bill Murray sing Bare Necessities, but it was it was brilliant how they were able to do that. Um, mm-hmm. Other things about this movie. Uh, the CGI, I thought, looked pretty good, um, like yeah. facial-wise, with uh, Bagheera and uh, Baloo, Shere Khan, especially uh, King Louie, the wolves. Like, it didn't uh, – CGI has gotten so much better now to where it doesn't look like fake i know like i i know that like probably 90 percent of the animals in this movie were cgi but you know you gotta work with it yeah you, you kind of have to um, and it's difficult to film you know live action animals for a movie and y- yeah. you, you can't 
I mean, you can't just put a tiger and a panther together. You, it doesn't work that way. You can't put <laughs> no. a tiger, a bear, and a and a, 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 tiger, a, a panther together. It, it's it won't work. And so, if you were to try to do that, well, you're going to have to use cut scenes or basically camera effects where you film one animal and another time you film another animal and another time then you kind of put the film together and, and there you go you have all three animals on the same screen that would have taken too much time and then of course you would have to still cgi their faces when why can't you just cgi all the animals that Bliss, saves more Bliss, time you're you're forgetting don't put a human and a tiger in the same room for an extended no. period of time Especially you don't do if this. it's a child child endangerment <laughs> <laughs> this this is not child. Uh, what is it? This is not Life of Pi. I don't think this is a good idea, guys. But no, see, they did this once. Uh, I remember one time they had animals, real animals, on the movie set, and uh, and there were people next to them too. But again, this was a combination of cut screen and merging the film together. And that right. movie was from Bruce Almighty. Oh however, yeah, I remember that movie. However, here's a story for you, just to give an idea of why they probably are not doing this anymore. One of the lions got loose on the set. Oh, yeah. I think I didn't hear about this. Wait, do you mean, <laughs> do you mean Evan Almighty? Because that's the one with, like, all the animals and, like, no Oh, I'm art. sorry. Yeah, it was Evan Almighty. I derped. Because yeah. I'm just like, Bruce Almighty didn't have... Oh, you mean Evan Almighty. I'm yeah. not Evan uh, Almighty. Yeah, Evan Almighty but... was meh. <laughs> Apparently, one of the lions got loose on the set, and the keepers announced it, like, over the, like, sound speaker. So, everybody, remain calm. Don't move. There's a lion on the loose, loose and he's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's one of the reasons why they don't use live animals anymore. <laughs> yeah. Getting back to the movie, though. Uh, final thoughts? Uh, I absolutely loved it. My, uh, my husband asked me to give a rating right now, and I said a nine. Yeah, I'll, I'll I give it a fair nine. Um, there were some parts I felt where the story kind of... Um, went off and did its own thing but i think it i think it was wondering like okay here's the moments from the movie from the cartoon that you remember bam 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 we're gonna connect them all together oh right now we gotta get to the fight with the uh, shere khan bam um end it's just it felt very like you know what to expect if you've seen the um if you've seen the cartoon, just like, you know what characters to see, you know what's going to happen. So the only real surprises came with how the characters looked and how different they looked compared to, you know, the cartoon. And how they performed, especially at the ending. Again, at the ending where the fight between Mowgli and Shere Khan, Mowgli ties a branch that's lit on fire to the Shere Khan's tail and he just runs off into the distance and he's never seen again. Here Whereas he actually outsmarts Shere Khan up using a tactic from near the beginning of the movie and Shere Khan just dies. Yeah, he just falls, creels to his death to a flaming abyss. But he, he, he was he was froloed, basically. Even before that, again in the cartoon, animals came to Mowgli's defense and however they were all vultures here the entire jungle of animals came to Mowgli's defense the wolves Bagheera Baloo man Baloo was the first to attack <laughs> yeah that was good we didn't see that in the original we saw everybody uniting and I felt that was uh pretty symbolic too like symbolism there and symbolism with the whole red flower thing they actually talked more about it here it felt yeah. like more more impactful even when Shere Khan was trying to use um the red flower example that Mowgli had just like yeah now who do they fear now yeah it's like look who's more scarier than me you you're, you're carrying what could destroy their homes and their lives right there in your hand you are no bet you are just what I tried to explain to all these idiots but they didn't listen so here you go people here's the proof and the, the sad thing is he's right he was never really the villain if you think about it like he, he's a predator okay but it's okay when you think about this i think when he was trying to just maintain order there were some points where you know he didn't really seem like a villain but the scare tactic and just throwing someone off okay i'll give him that he's more of a villain here i think more in the well more not to mention well not to mention uh raksha pointed out called him out saying you know killing for fun and for power that's what you do and he does he did he, I mean, he, I mean, when he went to attack uh, Mowgli's dad in that past flashback, his dad well, didn't do anything to him. They were in a cave. They were enjoying a, a warm fire, and here comes Shere Khan. He's like, you know, what? I think I'm gonna kill you. 
Yeah, so when I say that he was never really the villain, per se, I think in his twisted mind he was going to try to keep uh, the order, but he used a lot of scare tactics to do so. He was a tyrant. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't a leader, he was a tyrant. Yeah. He wanted to rule by fear. And at least he almost did. <laughs> at least now we know that, like in the cartoon, oh, Shere Khan survived, so that must be a sequel. In this, no, Shere Khan's dead. No, no he's sequel. dead. There's no sequel. It's he's it's over. Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> this pussy cat is dead. No sequel ain't happening here. Light meat or dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really love this movie too. It's um was a faithful, I think, adaptation of the cartoon, and I think it did a good job to honor. The, um, the original source material. I have not read it completely, but I understand it. I've done a little bit of reading about it. I've just never actually physically read it. Mm. But I think this movie did a good job doing um, that. I think... Um, what else was there? Yeah, the music was really good. I loved how they ended it. And um, yeah, I, I think this is one you should definitely go see. If you haven't already, I mean, like, yep. <laughs> you have a good chance to take your kids yeah. to this. Yeah, go see it. Uh, I mean, but yeah, be aware that some scenes might be really violent and scary at times. There's Just some be. scary. There's some, like, really intense scenes here. But yeah. I love that in the end, it never lost its charm. Yeah. It never lost uh, the Disney charm that we can expect from it. It was a callback to my char- my childhood. Childhood? Childhood. Childhood, <laughs> <It was> a- <laughs> son. <laughs> it was a callback to my childhood, but it also, like, appealed to my age. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, with that being said, go ahead and put in the comments below what your thoughts on the new Jungle Book are. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to Lightning Bliss. She is awesome. She is one of my co-hosts for Roundtable is Magic. Ah, thank you. We worked, uh, we've worked so many times before, so... I'm surprised uh, you're not sick of me yet. <laughs> no, no, you and Keyframe, I swear. <laughs> we're, the, we're the odd trio here. Um, yeah, we um, Keyframe would be joining us for this. I would have loved to have Keyframe and uh, Sweetie Bloom in on this because I know they're oh, huge. Oh, they didn't see it yet? Hmm? Oh. Yeah, because Sweetie Bloom is an animal. Uh, she loves animals. She works at a shelter. She, she yeah. would have really gotten into this movie. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Uh, oh. So, yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe to our, uh, both our Twitters and our Patreons and such. We will see you guys in the next video. Stay awesome. When am I going? Oh, shit, I'm going first, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. You fucked it up. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't even do My this. Job. Right. <laughs> oh, it's going to the outtakes, lovely. <laughs>